Hello, my lovely photogs. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another video on the series about visual patterns. The series where we break down visual language into visual patterns so that we can better understand the heuristics of photography and how best to apply them to our work. Now, of course, if you don't know what any of those terms mean, feel free to go back to the very first video of this series where I break down exactly what visual language is, exactly what visual patterns are, and why you would use this kind of thinking over something, say, like photography rules. All right, in this video today, we are going to be talking about the idea of balance. Now, balance in photography is kind of tricky because it's very subjective and so it's very difficult to actually explain because the interpretations are quite different across the board and there's many different ways to balance an image and thus there are also many ways to interpret balance in an image as well. The way I like to think of balance in photography is through the perspective or through the ideology of harmony. Now being able to discern specific elements in a image and how those different elements relate to one another is a really good way of being able to understand if an image allows the viewer's eyes to rest. If there is some level of settledness in an image, if there is some level of rest and harmony in an image, we can say that an image is balanced. When an image is not balanced, we can say that certain elements tend to stand out more than others. We can say that for better or for worse, whether that be intentionally or unintentionally, regardless of the intention, we can say that when an image is not balanced, we can spot certain elements that tend to steal the spotlight, so to speak. And that might manifest itself in chaos or unpredictability or a lack of thoughtfulness throughout the composition. Now, the tricky part about balance, as I mentioned before, is that different people have different levels of understanding when it comes to visual language. And so your viewers will have different interpretations of what balance means to them. Now, of course, this is the case with any visual pattern that you're using in photography, but specifically more so with balance because the idea of balance in photography is more so a, a theme rather than a specific pattern in and of itself. It is more of a, a collection of themes, a collection of ideas, a collection of patterns that give the image, the composition, a sense of balance. It is a combination of things that give the image a sense of balance. Now, of course, if a viewer doesn't have a very strong understanding of visual language, they may or may not spot the patterns that you decide to put in your compositions and therefore their interpretations of whether an image is balanced or not will be different. Now, it gets even trickier when you realize that balance is actually typically thought of, traditionally anyway, as an arrangement of certain elements within your composition. And if you haven't watched the previous episode on visual patterns where I cover composition in detail, then go ahead and watch that one first before coming back to this one. But balance is more than just element positioning and adjustment. Balance can be achieved through so many other different methods as well. Things like symmetry, asymmetry, ratio, size, proportion, uh, color, negative space, the whole bunch of different other patterns can be used to achieve a certain level of balance within your compositions. But of course, all of this is much better illustrated with examples. And so let's go through 10 different examples of how balance may be achieved with different images and with different patterns. All right, so the first example here is a very traditional way to think about balance. And in this image, we have what is, in my perspective, a usage of negative space, scale, and proportioning when it comes to achieving a sense of a balance. Now, with this image, what I've done is I've shot the moon almost central. I would say that with this image, I deliberately included you know, the first third and the second third of the image to have negative space to really pop out the moon as best as I could so that the majority of the image overall is the moon. That is the focal point to this image. But contrasted to that, I have these gigantic mountain ranges down the very bottom, which typically would be very dominating in a overall composition. But because I've given the moon 
so much space, so much negative space to breathe. It accentuates and increases the visual hierarchy of the moon versus the uh, mountain ranges down the bottom. And so this in many ways is just your typical positioning and uh, balancing of overall size and scale when it comes to the elements in your composition. And this would be, in, in my perspective, what I think most people would think of when it comes to the idea of balancing an image and balancing elements and balancing those elements within your composition. So in this image, we have a composition of an island and it's flipped with uh, the reflection of a lake. And in this image, we have what is, in my opinion, probably the most common, uh, I think, pattern when it comes to most people associating what balance is to, to them, and that is symmetry. When it comes to symmetry, when it comes to reflections, mirror images, you know, uh, off glass, off water in this case, whatever the case may be, a lot of people understand this visual pattern, understand symmetry as feeling balanced, as feeling harmonious, because it is the, the mirror image and the, the flipped nature of this particular composition that gives the viewer's eyes a place to rest because they are focusing on the flip itself, the mirror image itself, rather than any specific elements. Well, that is at least initially after the first phase of viewing takes place. And so if you want to have the idea of balance very much front and center in your overall compositions, then something to do with symmetry or using symmetry as a visual pattern is a very good way to achieve that. And in this image, we have exactly the same idea. It is a central subject with a reflection shot off a lake, except the reflection in this instance isn't as pronounced. And so in this image, we have the idea of symmetry. We have the idea of the main subject being flipped into the lake, but the overall reflection, the overall symmetry of the composition is still quite dominant when it comes to this image. And that is what gives this image a sense of balance. In this image, what I wanted to demonstrate is the idea that asymmetry, so the opposite of symmetry, can also be used in tandem with other visual patterns in order to make an image feel more balanced and more harmonious as well. So in this particular image, we have the idea of proportion, ratio, size, and scale to help us achieve this look of uh, asymmetry, but also a sense of balance as well. So we have a larger kind of hut here on the left and we have that juxtaposed against these two huts on the right and the sizes of these two smaller huts are quite a lot smaller than this main one but collectively these two on the right are about the same size as the one on the left and then we also have this idea that you know in this kind of middle slice here if you were to break up this image this composition into multiple slices we would have the foreground down at the bottom we would then have this kind of snow slice in the middle and then the mountain ranges in the back and so we can see that in terms of overall size of the overall composition, these relative slices of the overall composition are quite similar when it comes to overall focus and when it comes to overall proportion and ratio. In this image, we have something that uses both symmetry and asymmetry and a, a couple of other visual patterns as well in order to demonstrate the idea of balance and harmony as well. So if you look at this image, if you were to just like squint your eyes, you would see that this image is actually quite symmetrical. There is, you know, three kind of windows here. There's a door in the middle here. There's uh, a frame on the right and a frame on the left. And it's all very quite symmetrical. Now with the symmetry in this image, the symmetry is what gives this overall composition balance. But I've also decided to include a person down the bottom right to make it asymmetrical and also throw it off balance. And that is a very intentional uh, device that I've used for this particular composition. But that in and of itself is a, a way for you to achieve a harmonious look overall, but still be able to direct the viewer's attention to where you want it to go. In this image, we have a example of scale and proportion. So it's a very simple image. It's just an image of a, a kind of shrine in the middle of a lake 
with Mount Fuji in the background, but I've shot it such that the roof of this little shrine is approximately the same size as Mount Fuji. And I've done this deliberately in the hopes of the proportion playing out so that it's quite even and quite balanced in that way, you know that Mount Fuji is absolutely gigantic, right? It's, it's over 3000 meters tall, but positioning the elements in this way with this particular kind of perspective gives the sense that the two triangular shapes are the same and it makes it a lot more harmonious and less contrasty than if I was to make this gigantic and then make Mount Fuji small or make this absolutely tiny and make Mount Fuji small. They're both the same kind of overall size in this composition. In this image, we're talking about a very easy, easy way to achieve balance and that is through use of pattern. So here we have a bunch of buildings. They're obviously shaped in a grid, but because the grid is so symmetrical, so, so pattern based, uh, we have a very simple top down image. that's very easy to understand that uses an idea of symmetry and pattern in order to achieve a harmonious and balanced look. I've deliberately put this very chunky kind of road in the very middle of this image and made sure that all of the elements are uh, proportional to one another and placed in a way that where they actually do balance each other out because of their positioning. So with this image, we have a, a kind of playful take on how balance can be achieved through the idea of contrast or tone. So in this image, we have you know, a light section here, a light strip. We have a dark strip in the middle, and then we have a light strip again in the foreground. And with this image, you know, I'm not saying that this is how you would achieve balance every single time, but this is another kind of idea, a creative way that you can achieve balance through the use of sectioning different areas of your composition and using them to contrast against one another so that you can then achieve a overall sense of balance with your overall composition. In this image, what I wanted to show is that you can also use the idea of color to balance an image as well. So in this instance, we've got complementary colors working together to tie the overall composition together. So we have very deep blue here, and then we have some you know, yellowy kind of orangey hues of the sunset in the clouds on this image. And it is this contrast of colors that allow the overall composition to feel more harmonious together rather than, you know, if it was a whole bunch of, you know, different colors mashed together, for example. If you haven't already checked out the visual pattern episode on color, then I highly recommend that you do so as well, because not only can you use complementary colors in this way, but you can also use other color groups such as analogous or triadic color groups in order to achieve a harmonious and balanced look as well. And the last image I wanted to show you is an example of how negative space can be used to achieve a sense of balance as well. So in this image, we have the positive space which is essentially everything that's below the halfway mark here. All of the, the dark portions of this image, the mountain range, the central figure, these portions are, I would say, the positive space of this image contrasted with the negative space, the sky of this image. And those two are quite evenly weighted in this image and that gives it balance and harmony as well. And that's it for all of the examples for the idea of balance and harmony as well when it comes to photography. And again, this idea of balance in photography is very subjective and very individualistic in its understanding. And so, you know, even my understanding of visual language and visual patterns when looking at an image may be different to your interpretation of balance when it comes to the same image, even if we both have really good levels of understanding when it comes to visual patterns, right? So take all this with a grain of salt. Remember that it is very subjective. It is very individualistic, but the basic idea here is that you can combine multiple visual patterns together and have them work with one another to achieve a sense of balance in an image. And in doing so, you'll definitely have more interesting images and more interesting compositions to be able to show all of your viewers. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the rest of the series on visual patterns if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.